Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade eight, unit number three, lesson six. Okay, our first question here is explain what the slope and intercept mean in each situation. A graph represents the perimeter y in units for an equilateral triangle with a side length of x units. The slope of the line is 3 and the y-intercept is 0. Y-intercept is 0, slope is 3, it'll look something vaguely like that. Y-intercept is 0, which means... Starting value is 0. The perimeter of a triangle starts at 0 and gets bigger. Which makes sense. If the side length is 0, the perimeter is 0. The slope of the line is 3. The slope tells us the rate of change. is 3. What that means is the perimeter is 3 times the length of a side. I feel like my handwriting is especially bad today. The rate of change is 3. If the length of each side gets one inch longer. The length of the perimeter gets three inches longer. There's three sides. It's a triangle, equilateral triangle. So they all the sides grow at the same rate. K B, the amount of money Y in a cash box after X tickets are purchased for carnival games. Slope of the line is one fourth. The Y intercept is eight. So the starting value is 8. The starting value, if it's how much money is in a cash box, the starting value is how much money was in the box to begin with. The cash in the box at the start is $8. The slope of the line is one quarter, one fourth. If it's, we're talking about X tickets, one ticket adds a quarter, four tickets would add one dollar. Tickets are 25 cents each. Tickets are 25 cents each. Cash box started with eight bucks in it. Okay. C, the number of chapters read Y after X days. Ooh, this is a good one I love to read. Slope of the line is five over four and the Y intercept is two. So the starting value is two and we're looking at number of chapters. So that means we are already at chapter two. We're already at chapter two. The slope of the line is five over four. After X days. So if we change by one and a quarter chapters, every day, that means we read one and a quarter chapters per day. Let me move this a little bit so that my head isn't being in the way. Okay, the graph shows the cost in dollars, y, of a muffin delivery and the number of muffins ordered. The slope of the line is 2 and the y-intercept is 3. 
So the starting value, the cost for zero muffins is $3. If the cost for zero muffins is $3 and it's for delivery, you're paying $3 for delivery. The slope of the line is two for each muffin ordered. That means you're paying $2 per muffin. $2 a muffin, $3 delivery fee. Customers at the gym pay a membership fee to join and then a fee for each class they attend. Here's a graph that represents the situation. What does the slope of the line show by the points shown by the points mean in this situation? So Number of classes zero, they pay $60. Number of classes one, they pay $80. Number of classes two, they pay $100. The slope, we have a rise of $20 in a run of one class. That means they pay $20 a class. Take exercise class at the gym, you pay 20 bucks a class. What does the vertical intercept mean? The y-intercept, this point right here, means if we take zero classes, we pay $60. That's going to be the membership fee. $60 membership fee. $20 a class. Okay, graph shows the relationship between the number of cups of flour and the number of cups of sugar in Lynn's favorite brownie recipe. Ooh, now I want a brownie. The table shows the amount of flour and sugar needed for Noah's favorite brownie recipe. So we have cups of sugar, cups of flour for both. Noah and Lynn buy a 12 cup bag of sugar and divide it evenly to make their recipes. If they each use all their sugar, how much flour do they each need? So if they buy a 12 cup bag and divide it evenly, they get EAHC? Who the heck is writing this stuff? Spelling is hard, that's why I teach math. Okay. 12 cup bag of sugar, divide it evenly to make their recipes. So they each get six cups of sugar. So, how many cups of flour is that? Well, looking at this graph for Lynn, If I extend that, six cups of sugar is three cups of flour. So how much flour do they each need? That's Lynn's graph. Lynn needs three cups. How about Noah? This one's a little trickier six cups. Well, three cups of flour is four and a half cups of sugar. Nope, thinking about it the wrong way. I was looking at the wrong piece. Three cups of sugar is two cups of flour. They have six cups of sugar, which would mean four cups 
of flour. So Noah needs four cups. It says how much do they each need? Lynn needs three cups, Noah needs four cups. If they got it in total, they would need seven cups of flour. Ooh. Now, Noah and Lynn buy a 10 cup bag of flour and divide it evenly to make their recipes. 10 cup bag of flour divided evenly is five cups each. So, five cups each of flour. How much sugar? Uh-oh, this one doesn't go high enough. But, if I look at this, let me switch to a nice different color. Two and a half cups of flour is five pounds of sugar, which means if I double that, Two and a half cups of flour is five pounds of sugar, which means five cups of flour. Lynn needs 10 cups of sugar. How about this one? Five cups of flour. Well, five cups of flour is three cups and two cups put together. Three plus two, it's usually five. So five cups of flour would need these put together. Three cups of sugar and four and a half cups of sugar is seven and a half cups. So Lynn needs 10 cups, Noah needs seven and a half cups. Each, that would be 17 and a half total together. Looks like that is our last problem for today. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.